Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Bonnie Henry, the Provincial Health Officer for British Columbia, and this is our COVID-19 update for today, September 21st. Um, as we all know, a provincial election has been called earlier today. And for those who may be wondering, I would like to assure you that the BC COVID-19 response will continue uninterrupted. And it is, of course, my priority. As has been done since the start of this pandemic, a daily COVID-19 update will be provided Monday to Friday to keep everyone in BC informed. I will also be continuing with the in-person briefings on Mondays and Thursdays, as we have been doing for the past number of weeks. Um, as well, uh, uh, the Deputy Minister of Health, Stephen Brown, and myself will be meeting with Minister Dix and with the caretaker minister, Minister James, to make sure that everybody is up to date on what is happening on a daily basis with the pandemic and is able to ensure um, that we have active ongoing management of any issues that arise as we move through this pandemic together. Having said that, I do also want to take a step back and um, um, just to, to acknowledge with gratitude that I am speaking to you today from the uh, traditional territories of the Lekongan speaking peoples of the Esquimalt and the Songhees First Nations. And I'm very grateful to be here today. So like other parts of our economy, I have also worked with Elections BC to make sure that we had guidelines in place for a safe election process. Um, and that is something that we have been uh, talked about before, that we've been working with Elections BC since uh, in March, when there was uh, elections planned, municipal elections had been planned for later that month. And we have been working with them continuously uh, since that time, recognizing that there was potential for elections as this pandemic progressed, both municipal, provincial and federal. And the guidelines that we've come up with include how political parties and their candidates need to keep themselves, their staff and volunteers and their community safe during the campaign. We've also outlined how elections processes uh, need to occur to ensure that everybody uh, in the province remains safe and these can be handled safely. And tomorrow I'll be joining the Chief Electoral Officer and we'll brief everybody on the specific details of the plans. So for today, for our COVID update, we have three reporting periods. From Friday to Saturday, we had 121 new uh, cases of COVID-19. Between Saturday and Sunday, 117 new cases. And Sunday to today, 128 new cases were identified. That gives us a total of 366 new cases, including seven which were epidemiologically linked bringing our total in British Columbia to 8,208 people with COVID-19. That includes 2,945 in the Vancouver Coastal Health Region, 4,211 in the Fraser Health Region, 203 people in Vancouver Island Health, 508 people in the Interior Health Region, 255 people in Northern Health, and 86 people who were born or who reside outside of Canada. We have 1,987 active cases today across the province, of whom 60 are in hospital, 21 of whom are in critical care or ICU. Over this past weekend, we have four additional people who have died from COVID-19, bringing the total number of deaths to 227. There were two people in Vancouver Coastal Health, one in Fraser Health, and a, a second person who died in Northern Health Region. And my condolences and my thoughts go out to the communities, to the families, and to the care teams who looked after these people. We have two th uh, 3,233 people under public health monitoring across British Columbia and 5,972 people who have now recovered. We have one additional health care outbreak to report today. That's at Yale Town House, a long-term care facility in Vancouver Coastal Health, where a single health care worker has been identified and outbreak protocols have been implemented. And one outbreak has been declared over at the Queen's Park Acute Care Unit. We now have 15 active outbreaks in our health care system, 12 in long-term care assisted living and three in acute care, um, involving 813 people so far. 
484 residents and 329 staff. We have no new community outbreaks, but I do encourage people to check with health authority websites regularly as exposure events continue to recur. As you know, we are also posting exposure events that are happening in schools around the province to make sure that uh, everybody is aware and that they know that we are working with schools and public health together to manage any cases that arise. We've had a number of exposures in, in a number of different school settings. They are mostly very low risk, which is what we would expect. We have had no clusters, no transmission events in schools, and no outbreaks at this point. And we must continue to stress the layers of prevention that we have in place in our school system to make sure that children and teachers and staff can get back to school safely. And on that note, I do want to thank all of the teachers and the staff who have done amazing things in the past week. I have heard many stories over this past weekend about uh, the happiness of children being back in the classroom. It's been challenging, I know, but the innovation and imagination that's been shown has been tremendous. I also want to thank school staff from our bus drivers, admin staff, custodial staff, who've all done an incredible job over the past week to get children back into the all-important learning environments that they need in schools. COVID-19 requires new routines and new boundaries to keep our friends, our families, our communities safe this fall and winter. It's important for all of us to take a few minutes to determine what are our safe distances for each of our activities. I know it would be helpful for many people and I, to have clear black and white guidance of what to do. And many of you have personally reached out to me for ask, ask for this. But when it comes to making a safe distance, it really is on a spectrum and it depends on our own situation and our own circumstances. But as a rule of thumb for people you don't know that you are spending time with, you need a bigger distance for those people you are close to. Think of it this way, at one end of the spectrum is the person you've never met before and at the other end is your bubble, your immediate household bubble. Everyone else is in between. And a few more specifics. For people you don't know or see regularly, maintaining that two meters is incredibly important. And if you're outside, it's less risky than being inside. If you're inside and you can't maintain those two meters, that's where it's incredibly important to wear a mask. For your household bubble, getting close with hugs and kisses is absolutely fine. Those are the people that we need to have that physical contact with. For classmates and colleagues who you see most days in a more structured environment, the distance may not need to be as great as long as you keep those interactions in a managed way. So we are always sitting next to the same person. You're always making sure you're part of that same small group. And it's part of your regular group that you're together with in a classroom. And no mixing between multiple groups. For your safe six friends, Closer is okay, but not physical contact. So no hugging and kissing with those friends. Those are ones where you want to keep that same six and you can have more close contact. Of course, if someone you spend time with is older or has an underlying health condition that makes them more at risk to having severe illness from COVID, you might want to step back and reduce the number of contacts you have outside that or maintain a distance from those people if you are in situations where you have had contact with a numbers of others. If your job or other activity requires you to be around a lot of people, then you want to slide up the distance scale and stay farther apart. The easiest way to set these new routines and help protect your communities as we go through this respiratory season is to stick with that same group small group of friends, the same colleagues, the same classmates. I'd like to thank everybody in our province for your continued resilience and determination to see this pandemic through. It has been a long haul and we have a ways to go in this storm. I invite you as we head into fall tomorrow to set your personal safety plans for the season ahead, to think about how you are going back to work, back to school, back to other activities, and where you need to pull back and maintain more space and more distance. 
the actions each of us takes today will help ensure that we are going to get through the next few months safely. So let's continue to each of us do our bit each and every day to flatten our curve again. Let's get ready for the respiratory season, hold steady with our layers of protection, step back from our socializing with different groups, and step forward on these routines that will keep our communities and our loved ones safe. And of course, let's continue to be kind, to be calm, and to be safe.